Hi, my name's John. Welcome to what's probably going to be the last video in the series on the review of the Artec 250 amp inverter MIG welder. In the last video, we'll put the aluminium wire on the machine, then we'll put the Teflon liner on the torch, and the special drive rollers for aluminium. In this video, we're going to do some welding. That's right, aluminium welding. And uh, what I've got, I've got some samples, Artec samples up from 1mm to 6mm thick. Uh, what I'll be doing, I'll be using the machine of a 13 amp supply, using 1mm wire, until I get to the 6mm, and then above the 6mm, I've got some half inch and some 3 quarter plates. I'll be putting 1.2mm wire in, putting it onto the heavy supply, and turning things up to see exactly what the machine's capable of doing. What I've found, uh, well in the aluminium, the aluminium must be clean. Not quite as clinically clean as it needs to be for TIG, but it's got to be clean. Uh, this stuff here, yeah, just a, a scrub of the wire brush is sufficient for that. The bits have got the plastic plastic coating on, uh, rub them with a little bit of acetone just to take any residue off, off the glue. You also need pure organ. I've got the, the welder fastened to a, a bottle of pure organ uh, off my TIG welder. So what I'll do, I'll try and get some, some shots of welding through a welding mask to show you exactly how it's welded. Uh, I'll show you the power settings I use for the different thicknesses of metal. Uh, just so if you do decide to have a good aluminium, you've got somewhere like a starting point. This is what settings for 1.5mm aluminium plate. Put the tacks on it. That's, that's not a bad result. There's a little bit of black. That just wire brushes off. That's really burning in hot that. Right, we've got quite a decent result, quite a nice, a nice build up of weld there on 1.5 mm plate. You can see it's gone right through, complete penetration, that would be a strong weld. Right, we've got some, some 3 mm plate here, we'll try some welds on that, see what sort of settings I'm going to need to get decent results on it. It's brand new, brand new nice clean metal. And all I do, I thought you give it a wipe with uh, acetone or panel wipe just before you weld it. It makes a big difference. Right, I'll set it up again. It's just straightforward, straightforward T joint. I've got some anti, anti spatter spray. We'll give it a try. Can't do any harm. These are the power settings for the 3 mil aluminium. We're still running on the 13 amp supply. That's a decent weld. You can tell when you're welding it, it's, uh, it's getting a decent weld. It's penetrated right through as well. That's, that's as welded without being cleaned up. 
Uh, the well, the anti spatter spray has certainly made a big difference. You can see it's penetrating all the way through. Maybe you can see better there. It's actually penetrating through. All it takes is a rub of the wire brush. That's quite a, quite a respectable weld. It's certainly ten times quicker than TIG welding. This is six mil plate this time. What I'll do, I'll do a, a butt joint like that. I'll leave a small gap, weld that from one side and test it. And I'll set it up and do another T joint. Um, I'm going to weld it still on a 13 amp supply. This will probably be the limit of what it'll, what it'll do on 13 amps. Then we'll put the, the heavy supply on. I've got about a 3 mil gap between the two plates. I'm going to weld it and see what. That's the, that's the reverse side of the weld, you can see it's penetrated all the way through. If you want to veil that out and weld this side again, it will make a really strong weld. But we'll just do a one-sided weld and we'll test it and see what sort of what sort of penetration we've actually achieved. That's the, the setting I'm using for the, the 6mm plate. Still running on a 13 amp supply and that's about as high as I would want to take it on 13 amps. My voltage is set on half and my wire speed's nearly on, nearly on full. Uh, I'll put the 1.2mm wire in and turn it right up. There is various ways of testing welds, pulling them, bending them, different sort of tests. This test always gives you a rough idea of what sort of weld you've got. Safety say you've got quite a decent weld there. I'm not a welder or a weld inspector, but I will certainly say that that weld there is reasonable. One run, six mil plates, it's bent to 90 degrees, no problem at all. That's a T joint we did on the 6mm plate. We welded that side first and then turned it over and welded the other side. And you can see how that side's running better because it was actually it was actually preheated, it was warmer or hotter. What I'll do, I'll cut that through on the on the bandsaw and see what sort of penetration we've achieved. I don't know how well you can see that but it's a hundred percent penetration that's all one piece of metal now there's a little bit of undercut on this side of the weld that's my fault like I see I'm not a welder that side's pretty good we'll put it in the vise and give it a give it a bend test
I mean, I think you'll have to agree there's not there's not a great lot to matter with that really. It's actually failed there, but the, the metal's failing next to the weld. The weld itself hasn't hasn't moved at all. I'll get a close up of that. It's actually cracked along there, but it's cracked past the weld. The weld itself still the weld itself still good. I mean I was hitting that bastard there. Just to show how much wire or actually put into the weld on the six mil the six mil plate. That's how fast the wire is actually coming out. That's one mil wire. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the machine off the 13 amp supply and put some 1.2 mil wire in and weld some thick up in it. Turn the, the drive rule around. <coughs> it's a different drive rule off our aluminium wire. It's got a U-shaped groove instead of a V groove. One side's one mil, one side's one point two. What you must not do is use that one point two mil roller with one point two mil steel wire. The inverter's designed to max out on one mil wire. If you put one point two mil wire in, you'll damage the inverter. Turn my set on. Right there it is. Ideally what we want, we want the we want the rollers to slip like that. If the wire jams, or well doesn't jam it actually melts onto the tip. And when it happens, we want the rollers to, to slip instead of the wire all bunching up. Right, I'll get a new tip for it. Right, this is the new tip. It's a 1.2mm tip for aluminium. It's got 1.2 with an ear root on for aluminium. But actually, it, it's a bigger hole, it's a, it's a slacker fit than a tip would be for steel. Simply screws into there. Nip it in. What I found is when you've been welding for a few minutes, if you pull the shroud off, you'll find that tips come slack and tighten it up again. So I set up so the rollers will slip if the wire melts onto the end of the tip. This is 10 mil plate, it's been tightly together and wire brushed. We're going to weld it with a 1.2 mil wire. I'm going to turn the wire feed up just a little bit. Just a touch more wire for the same voltage. So it was getting towards the, the end of the weld up here, it was starting to get a bit hot. You can see that that's quite a decent a decent big weld on 10 mil plate with minimal preparation, just a, a rub of the wire brush. Another weld there, you can see what started it, it actually starts to weld better as it gets towards the end of the weld, as it gets preheated. Okay, this is 16 mil plate. I've got the wire feed uh, maxed out on the welder, a 1.2 mil wire. And I've got the voltage at about 70%, that's that's all it is, that's as much as the as a wire will take.
I mean that, that really is burning in there. It's quite a decent weld. The weld's nice and clean. There's a little bit of black soot either side of the weld, but right next to the weld you can see where it's, it's like a light grey colour where it's, it's actually cleaned itself. This is one thing I have found with welding aluminium with a MIG, you do need ventilation, that's horrible. Some horrible fumes come off it, especially when you start to get the amperage crank right up. To summarise aluminium welding with a MIG, uh, it's definitely possible, you've seen me weld aluminium, no problem at all. Lots of people have had problems with wire feed. If you fit the correct liner, use the correct rollers at the correct tension, you won't have a problem. I've melted one or two tips where the wire has actually melted to the tip and the rollers have just spun and the wire hasn't pushed through into what they call the bird's nest. To sum up the, the, the machine as a whole, I've had it for a couple of months now. It's done everything I've wanted it to do. Um, my friends had a end of it. It's had a week solid work on a production line, uh, welding stainless steel, no problems at all. Uh, one thing I have done, I'll put a smaller torch on, instead of using the, the 250 amp torch, I'll put a 150 amp torch on, which just suits the sort of welding I do. It will weld up to 6mm plate on a 13 amp supply, then you need to go up your, your heavier supply to turn the welder right up to get its full 250 amps out. I've used it on uh, MMA stick welding, as you've seen in previous videos, it's excellent on stick welding. All in all, I'm very happy with the machine. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.